I'm here to get answers. I'm 24, I've never seen my dad. I just found out that he raped my mom. I had just had a baby, and I tried to explain to him that I, I couldn't do that. And I looked down the hallway, and he was shaking Danny. He shook me when I was two weeks old. Were you drinking? Alcohol had nothing to do with it. Do you have doubts that your mom has told the truth? But I got angry. Your father took a lie detector test. Your mother took a lie detector test. In that time of 24 years, did you ever make an effort to see your son? No, because every time. Okay, well then stand up while you tell the rest of your story. The whole childhood, bam, gone. You don't get one day of it back. For a moment, you were gonna run out the door. Your son's not behind that door. Do you wanna see the son that you haven't seen in 24 years? If you're truly sorry, man up, or you will not have nothing to do with me or your granddaughter. Did you shake your son, Daniel? And you answered no. And the result of your lie detector test is? My heart's beating freight train right now. Would you like to go see a paramedic? Welcome to the show. My first guest is Danny. And Danny, why did you call the show? Well, Steve, I'm 24. I've never seen my dad. Uh, I just recently found out that he raped my mom. And he shook me when I was two weeks old. And you. You know, I'm here to get answers. I want, I want to know why he did it. So you basically have never met your father? No. And who has told you that your father did this? My mom. And all these years, no contact at all? Your dad never picked up the phone, called you up? When I was, it, she, told, she said that we used, to talk, we used to talk all the time when I was like real, real little. I and you have remember. no memories of that? No. And so, how old are you now, Danny? I'm 24. You're 24? Uh, you're in a relationship, you have a daughter. Yes. And you going out with your life, you're a grown man now. Yes. But this still bothers you with your, your dad. Yes. And when, when was it that you, your mom told you that he raped her, that he picked you up and he shook you? Uh, I was 20 when she had told me. I didn't want to believe her because he's my dad, but I wanted to believe, believe my mom. Be, I wanted to believe her because she wouldn't lie to me some, that serious. She wouldn't lie to me about it. What, and what was the reason that you were told all those years growing up that your dad wasn't in your life? We just, just divorced or, you know. My mom said they were divorced. And they, they that was along. That was it. What did, what, what did you know about your father growing up? The only thing I knew about him was he was an alcoholic and he was in the military. So your mom said, oh, he's in the military yeah. and he's got a problem with booze. Yeah. Do you have doubts that your mom has told the truth? No, I don't have any doubts. So you believe that she, would never, she wouldn't lie to you about she something She wouldn't like lie this. to me about something this serious, no. Now, before the show, I, I guess your father is here. He took a lie detector test. Your mother took a lie detector test before the show, whether these allegations are true. What if it came back and your mom didn't pass? Then I'm going to be very angry. Because you don't, that's, why would she lie to me like that? You ever tell your mom, you know what, I've never met my father, I'd like to. Do you have any information on him? I'd like to go see my father, pick up the phone and, and call him and just talk to him? She, did, she didn't have no, no information on him. She had she no way to contact him. him. I've, looked for, I, I've looked for him on the internet. I've called all over California. And until I stopped looking for him. I, mean, I lost hope thinking I was never going to see him again until the show called me back. and said, hey, we found, we found your dad, your father. And then I... Do you want your father in your life? Hopefully he's changed. And yeah, but I'm, I mean, you I mean, you really don't even know. I mean, you've really, you have no recollection of the man. Why is it so important for you to meet him? I, I want to know, I want to know who he is. Do you want to see the son that you haven't seen in 24 years? Yeah. My heart's beating like a freight train right now. Would you like to go see a paramedic? Did you shake your son, Daniel, and you answered no? And the result of your lie detector test is... All right, well, Danny, I gotta imagine this is gonna be a, a big day for you one way or the other. 
You're 24 years old, never seen your father. Today you're going to get to see him. But before you do, I'm going to ask you to leave the stage. I'm going to talk to your father, and then I'll bring you back out. Okay. All right, here's uh, Danny's father that he hasn't seen his entire life. Let's bring out Steve. How you doing, Steve? Hey, good. Um, you haven't seen your son since he was two, two weeks, weeks old. old. And during these next 24 years, you ever make an effort to see your son? I... It's a real simple question. Phone calls? In the last I made, 20, I no, I'm not asking about phone calls. I'm asking a real simple question. In that time of 24 years, did you ever make an effort to see your son? No, because every time... Okay, well then stand up while you tell the rest of your story. <laughs> and, w and why haven't you made an effort in 24 years? Because it's either... I moved around or they moved around. When I found out where they were at, they, and I tried contacting them again, they were never at that same spot or, you know, or I'm moving around going, uh, uh, going to my deployment because I was in the Marine Corps, so I, I had to leave every, for every six months to go overseas. And I had no other, no other way of, tr of trying to get a hold of them. So you didn't keep track of where your family was at? Every time I did, they, they, they relocate or something else. And she wouldn't tell you, okay, I'm here now? The last time I heard, they were in Michigan. And when was that? 10 years ago. So the last time you heard anything about, and you were married to this woman or no? Yes. Oh, you were married to her? Yes. And so you're married, you have a boy, and all this, things fall apart, you end up getting divorced, right? Yeah. And she divorced me. And Okay, it happens. Last, last 10 years, you heard once, 10 years ago, that they might be in the state of Michigan. You yeah. paid child support all these years? Yeah. Just, you didn't know where the check was going? Well, she got help from the state of Michigan because I couldn't afford to pay it. You were? Because I was either not working or, or I was laid off or, or How whatever. long did you do in the military? What's that? How long were you in the military I was for? In, I was in active duty five years, and the rest was reserve time. Okay, so you were, you were on, in the Marines for five years, traveling about. But after five years, you came back, and you pretty much can live where you want, right? Yeah. You're not going on deployment after you're no. not on active duty anymore, nope. right? Why didn't you track down your son? Because I didn't know where they were at. You didn't know where they were at? No. You know, part of the reason is your ex-wife tells your son... The reason why you're not in his life, the reason why she didn't want to be with you is because at two weeks old, the last time you saw him, you picked up your two-week-old son and you violently shook him and that you also raped her. False accusations. I was brought up better than that. I know better than that. I'm not no stupid. I, you know, I know better than that. So you're saying no way in hell you shook your baby? Nope. No way in hell you nope. forced yourself upon your wife. Nope. Why would she say these things? I have no idea. No idea? Nope, because... Married, you have a son, all this happens, no idea. No idea. And, again, people that you bring into this world, you've been out of their life for 24 years. Does it, does it bother you at all that you have a son <laughs> that you've missed his whole childhood? Yeah, it does. I, not one day and I don't go by, I don't, I don't think about him. I didn't even know about the accusations until he got a hold of you. So what did you think was causing you to be away from your son all this time? If you didn't even know about the accusations until this show, why would you think, well, what's the reason I'm not in my son's life? Because, I don't know. I, I, I oh, can't answer that. Oh, come on. Who says that? <laughs> I was robbed. No, okay? hold on, hold on a second. It's like me. I'm, I have a little boy. And if 20 years, all of a sudden my wife divorces me, and I don't know why I don't hear about accusations or allegations, and 20 years would go by, and my son's not in my life, and I don't see him. 
and one day he's 24. And somebody would ask me, well, why haven't you seen your son? Why hasn't, why hasn't he been in your life? And I'd say, I don't know. I don't know. Money. My only son? My only son, 20 years? I'm going to miss his whole childhood? And at the end of those 20 years, I won't have an answer? I don't know. You say you're because not stupid? I didn't have the... You say answers like that, you just prove yourself wrong. No. I didn't have the money. I'll be right back. For a moment, you were going to run out the door. Your son's not behind that door. Did you shake your son, Daniel? And you answered no. And the result of your lie detector test is? My heart's beating like a freight train right now. Would you like to go see a paramedic? You were a Marine and you didn't fight to be spend see one day in your son's life? I find that hard to believe. What kind of Marine were you? Not a very good one, I guess. I guess not either. It's because being a Marine is a very, I'm very proud to be in the Marines, I've been in the Marines. It's a thing that I always look back and I, I feel good about that I did something with my life. But I also know that a lot of things that they taught me that I was in there for stays with me this very day. It will never leave me. And certainly not fighting for your family, fighting for your son. <laughs> One of the things we've been told is that you're a drunk. Is that true? No. So alcohol never came into play with the nope. cause of some of your problems? Nope. Alcohol never had a, a role in you being homeless. Nope. So you were this healthy, hardworking guy, and yep. you weren't able to get a job, travel, do anything. Are you really telling me that? Yes. I, alcohol had nothing to do with it. Were you drinking? Nope. You didn't drink at all? I drank, but I didn't drink it when I was there. Did you tr drink after you got out? and? Drink enough where you were nope. drunk at times? No. Nope. No. No drugs? No drugs. Nothing. So, no. really, no, no, nothing holding you back whatsoever. That's right. Okay. That, and you feel good about that? Anything you want to say? I wish I caught, got a hold of it. Because I tried. Believe me, I, I honestly tried. So, if you weren't working and you couldn't even support yourself, how were you paying child support? It's called back child support. I don't, don't care what you call it. If you're she homeless and you're not working, well, she, how did you pay it? Yeah, it could build up. I can understand. Yeah, you're wanted for back child support. You're wanted for a ton of dough. But how were you able to pay it if you don't work? When I was working, they were taking it out of my check. When was the last time you were working? Well, I'm working now. Yeah, but your son's not a little boy anymore. Well, I understand that. He's supporting himself. Back child support. Bad child support. Yes. And how much do you owe? A lot. <laughs> Can you give me a rough number? Well, when, when, when it started, it was eighty thousand dollars. So now I'm, I'm, making, I'm taking a guess. It's down to sixty thousand. You're down to sixty. Yes. So I would say that eighty was probably the whole thing, right? You never paid. I don't know how, how they worked that thing. Okay? Yeah, you don't know a lot. And they, so the state of Oregon is, is taking money on my check every okay. month. How do you feel that you weren't there at all for your son his whole life? Bad. Really? Yeah. Does, it, eat, does it eat you up? Yeah. We, we, I don't believe you, that's why. Okay. I'm, I'm telling you the truth, Steve.
I, I don't know, 24 years goes by and not one success story in there about contacting her, contacting your son? Last time I, when I talked to him, the last time I talked to him, he was 10 years old and they called me. I don't know where they got my number from. <laughs> and did she say, okay, you're 10, where are you calling from? I want to stay in touch with you? Yes, I did. <laughs> they gave me a phone number. They gave me a phone number, I tried calling it back, and it was disconnected. Disconnected. So, you're telling the truth about this rape? Yes. You didn't do it? No. And you're telling the truth about shaking your son? Yes. And you, when your wife said, she must have told you at some point, I want to divorce you? She didn't say anything like that to me. What she did she just say? did it. She just did it. And what happened? You signed them? Yeah, okay, let's get divorced. What could I do? I mean, no, I'm asking you. What did you yeah, do? Yeah, I signed them. Okay, and did you, when you signed these divorce papers, did you say, okay, what's what's my rights here? When am I going to see my son? I don't remember. I had they didn't tell me nothing. I have to. Oh, I had in the documents. Oh my God! Shake your head. Yeah, I I don't believe it. I want to take some lame <laughs> hands like that. That, you know what, that's how, that's how a father's not in their son's life for 24 years, because you don't have any answers. You tell me you're going to get divorced, and you don't ask why, you're, when you're going to get to see your son now that you're getting divorced, and you say, well, nobody told me anything. I didn't know. I didn't know where she was. I was homeless. I couldn't support myself. I couldn't do this. I couldn't do that. And you wonder why I shake my head? There's two reasons I ain't pummeled you yet. One my mom, and two, there ain't no fight in this shit. My heart's beating like a freight train right now. Would you like to go see a paramedic? You are the cop. Get off my stage. We have the most passive Marine I've ever met in my life. <laughs> the most, you probably took the bayonet off the rifle, right? <laughs> Unloaded the weapon. Shooting backwards. <laughs> so I'm gonna ask you to leave my stage and we're gonna meet your ex-wife and find out what she has to say. All right, here's his ex-wife. This is Danny's mother, Cheryl. Let's bring her up. I'll, I'll be right back. I'll be right back. Where is he? Were you, were you gonna run? No, I'm just going to go outside the other doors here. All right, so you have no intention of leaving. No, heck no. Okay, because I would think after 24 years, this is your big chance well, to yeah, see your son. Just... You're not going to run. I was just going to go outside. You know why you were going to no. do that. There's nothing outside that door. Your son's not behind that door. So about 24 years ago, Cheryl, you met uh, Steve, right? Young, good-looking Marine. Probably liked that uniform on him, right? Yeah. Looked nice. Yeah. Married him. Yeah. Things going good. Get pregnant. Actually, he had to leave for Okinawa, which he did. And I didn't. I wrote to him constantly and talked to him when I could, but I didn't see him until he came back when Danny was two weeks old. Now that night, the night he did get there to Michigan, I was so excited because I, I... You haven't seen him in a long time. He was no, deployed in Okinawa. and I adored him so. And Was your son born while he was overseas? Yeah. And so he, you he must got, have been excited? I went through the entire pregnancy without him and uh, had Danny. And I, I adored him so much and I was so happy 
to see him when he did get there. We had a nice night, and we just kind of hung out and talked and watched TV, and and uh, I held Dan, and that was the only real family night we ever had. And it came time to crash. I laid Danny down in in my room, and uh, I guess you know Stephen had been away from his wife in Okinawa for a long time and he wanted to do some of the wild thing, you know, which I could understand, but I had just had a baby. Just two weeks before. Yeah, and and I tried to explain to him, you know, that I, I couldn't do that. And he didn't listen. And I kept telling him no, and trying to push him off me. Danny was three feet away in the crib. And I thought, well, I could scream, because my dad was in the other room. He'd have come in there and killed him dead. <laughs> you know, and, and I thought, how, what am I going to tell Danny if that happens? You know, so then it was just, by then it was pretty much done. The next morning, Danny woke up. I cried myself to sleep. <laughs> Danny woke up and, and he was, you know, just kind of went for a little. He wanted his bath. So I asked Stephen to hold him so he wouldn't cry and I could go warm up his bottle. I went out in the kitchen and took the bottle out of the refrigerator and stuck it in the pan, you know, in the water. And I heard yelling. And I heard Stephen Tom yell at him to shut up. And okay, maybe I was a little docile uh, about the whole attacking me thing. But I got angry. And I looked down the hallway and he was shaking Danny. And I shot down the hallway and I took him away from him. And I'm, he, don't hold him again until you can act like a father. After that, later in the day, you know, he had, I had bought him some beer there before he came, you know, so he was like really sauced, really early. And then I realized he was nice when he was sauced. So uh, when he got low on beer, I was like, oh, you're out of beer. Let me get you a beer, honey. <laughs> Do you need another one? Oh, look at this 12-pack is empty. I'll go get you another one. And Because you were afraid of him sober. Yeah. So I kept him toasted the entire time he was there. <laughs> and so I took, we took him to the airport. And, you know, Dad drove me and him to the airport. And he's like, just think, pretty soon you're going to become living with me. I'm like, yep. You know, because I wasn't even going to. You know, he got, on, he got on the airplane. The next day, I went to a divorce lawyer. You know, my dad. If you're truly sorry, man up, or you will not have nothing to do with me or your granddaughter. The story doesn't end when our guests leave my stage. Stay tuned until the conclusion of the show. You'll never believe what's been going on since they left. As far as um, his claims that he didn't have no way to get a hold of Danny, he could have called. He had my parents' phone number. He could have called him anytime. I found him because Danny wanted him found. I called our divorce lawyer. 
his divorce lawyer. And I said, this is not about child support. I don't want nothing from it. But will you please give him this phone number so he can call Danny, because Danny wants to talk to him. And how old was Danny at the time? I think he was like 10. And uh, he, and he did. He, and he called. And uh, he said he wanted to see Danny. You know, and Danny is really excited. So um, we offered to pay for what one way, either his airplane there or his airplane back, if he wanted to come see Danny. Well, then he said, well, I'll, I can't really afford a motel room or food. So I talked to my husband. And he said, yeah, you know, he can stay here if you can deal with that, honey. And I said, you'll be here. And yeah, you know, it's for Danny, yeah. Well, then he said he couldn't cover the other airfare. And I'm so as like, long as it was a, a full expense paid trip, then he was going to come see his son. Yeah. But other than that, he and wasn't And I coming. thought, bull, pucky, you know. <laughs> and Danny had wanted one of those 64 things, Nintendo. And I'm like, Danny, this is the deal. Your father doesn't want to pay anything to come see you. And I think he's being a jerk. Now, I know you want that Nintendo really bad. If you think he's being a jerk, I'll get you the Nintendo. If you think that it's OK, that you still really want to see him bad, we will absolutely pay him. We'll get him here, and you can see him. Which, OK, maybe I shouldn't have offered the Nintendo. But I was angry, you know? And uh, he took the Nintendo. <laughs> through the show and we bring people on and listen to both sides of the story and to me this one's real easy you got a man on stage who his wife says he wants a divorce doesn't know why doesn't know when he's gonna ever see his child again doesn't know why he hasn't seen his child in 24 years I don't know if that's his answer to everything I don't know I don't know and then you have a woman that comes out and tells a story to the detail Comes home, he did this, he did that. Times and dates, remembering how your father reacted. How is it one person can remember everything as opposed to somebody who can't give me a decent damn answer to anything? <laughs> Do you want me to bring out Steve? If you want. Uh, it's not what I want. Right. It's what you want. I think Are in you order okay to with get, it? if you're going to bring Danny out here, I want to be out here for him. Well, I'm going to bring Steve out first. I'm going to let you confront him before I bring Danny out. And I want to get to those lie detector results before I, I get to Danny. Okay. <laughs> Let's bring out your ex. Let's bring out Steve. It's going to be sensitive, Steve. <laughs> you okay there, Steve? Yeah. Thanks. Is... My heart's beating like a freight train right well, now. Well, I'm sure it would be. Kind of like after a three mile run, huh? You scared? Nervous. It's got to suck to hear the truth. But I didn't do any of those things. Or you don't remember doing them. You know what? I listened to that story, and I might be wrong. I could go out there and read those lie detector results and have egg on my face. You got you got two choices right now. So you want to go out there and yeah, go out there. see your ex-wife? <clears throat> do you want to see the son that you haven't seen in 24 years? 
If he chooses to see you, I can't promise that. Or would you like to go see a paramedic? I'll go out there. Uh, totally on, this is your decision. Let's go. I actually never thought that I would have to look at you again. So I feel a little odd about it. At the same time, what happened between us happened between us. And I can let it go. But Danny's hurting. I don't want Danny hurting. Do you want him hurt? No. And I apologize for, you know, not trying to get old and sooner. I, I've moved around so many times, you know, that I, you know, things get misplaced. Don't give me babbling bullpucky because I know better. <laughs> you could, Your father took a lie detector test. Did you shake your son, Daniel? And you answered no. And the result of your lie detector test is... You are the cop. Get off my stage. There is an opportunity here. Danny's here. You're a grandfather. I mean, honestly, I'm not trying to be mean. What the hell do you care? What do you care that you're a grandfather? What the hell do you care? You haven't been a father for 24 years. You missed every day of your son's life. And why? Because you moved around a lot? Big deal. I'm going to say this, show. You're one of the most believable, most well-together people I've ever met in my life. I know you're telling the truth about everything. You said, though, this is an opportunity for your son. You want to give your son whatever he wants, even after everything you've been through. So I'm not even going to dignify for Steve your lie detector results. I'm not. I believe you. That's good enough for me. <laughs> You said that you're putting it past whatever happened between you and him, so I'm going to let that go. That's between you and him, and that's in the past. What you want to deal with is what he did to Danny, and we'll, we're going to respond to that. Do you have enough strength in you to stand up for your lie detector results? Did you shake your son, Daniel, when he was an infant? And you answered no. And the result of your lie detector test is you didn't tell the truth. You didn't tell the truth. Don't, don't act like, you know, you're surprised. You know what you did. You know what you did when you came home. You know what you did as a Marine, you know, spending a year overseas, coming home, a little drunk, that's my wife. I'm going to get what I want. Baby crying a little too long, makes you mad. You're going to shake a baby. I didn't do that. You didn't do that. No. But you can't pass the lie detector test, huh? You listening to this woman's story the whole time she's been on on this stage? Yes. You believe her? 
No. I know I do. No. Oh, no. Okay. But what's the, what part of your story are we supposed to believe? The I don't know part? <laughs> so I'm going to go back now and see if your son wants to meet Mr. I don't know. See if he wants to. You got a great mom, and I respect the hell out of your mom. And she's mature, and she's grown up, and she wants whatever you want. She wants to give you whatever you want. But whatever happened between, I believe your mom. There's no question. Your mom's telling the truth about everything. But as far as what your father did to you, shaking you, he took a lie detector test, and he failed. He hasn't been in your life. I don't even know if this is a guy, just me personally speaking, I don't even know if I don't want a guy like that in my life, around my kid. But it's your father. I know you've been hurt. So you want to see your father? You can go up on stage. But it's your decision what you want to do. Let's go. Sorry, Danny. Uh oh. Sorry, I'm gonna cut it. I have a five month old daughter. The thought never crossed my mind to pick her up and shake her. Why? Why'd you do it? I didn't. <sighs> the lie detector test said you lied. Man up, tell the truth. If you want anything to do with me, if you want anything to do with <laughs> if you're truly sorry, man up, or you will, not, you will not have nothing to do with me or your granddaughter. OK, I lied. Cheryl, I'm very sorry. I really am. Can you ever forgive me? God says I have to. Can we be friends at least? Well, that's kind of pushing it. OK. <laughs> there ain't one day that I have not thought about you. Yes, I should have tried to get a hold of you a lot better than this. Uh, and yes, I, I guess I don't have any answers why I didn't do it. But I am, believe it, I am sorry. I am, like I said, I am very, very sorry. I apologize to, to your mom, and I apologize to you. 24 is a year, years a little too late, huh? Yes, it is. You know, I... In front of your son, I'm just going to say it. I think you are a dirtbag. I think. <clears throat> I don't like any man that forces himself upon a woman, whether he's husband or not. She's a woman, and she has control over herself and what she chooses to do with her body. And I just don't like men that aren't there for their children, especially 24 years. There's no good excuse for anything you did up here. And Danny, I'm not telling you what to do. I know you've been hurt for a lot of years. And I know you've probably been waiting for this moment your whole life. And I know part of this show was if he passed the lie detector test, that he would get to see his granddaughter, your daughter, I'm, gonna, I'm going out on a limb here. I'm going to trust you just this once. So I'm going to let you go see, I'm going to let you see my daughter. I'm going to let you hold her. You want to 
to go with them, taking the meat and butter? Let's go, Mom. I got to say, you're one lucky bastard. You don't need me anymore at this point. I hope I helped you. I hope I helped you. I hope this helps your family in some way. But at this point, your mom did a great job raising a young man. And you can do everything on your own from this point and dealing with your father. And I commend you. You turn out to be a really good, really good guy. All right? Good luck to you. Thank you. Thank you. You did a great job raising your son. Thank you and bless you. Good luck to you. My little girl. Yes. Very good looking child, son. I, 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 I commend you. The story doesn't end when our guests leave my stage. Stay tuned until the conclusion of the show. You'll never believe what's been going on since they left. Since the show, Danny and Steven have been in constant contact. In fact, Danny and his wife are making arrangements for Steven to move into their home so they can continue to work on their newfound relationship.